we are recording, Keyshawn. Take it away. All right, perfect. Hello, Southeast Region leaders. I'm Keyshawn Graves. I'm here with Craig Collier and Robbie Carter. And welcome, like Craig mentioned, to our April edition of our regional training. We have an amazing guest. We have Ruth Schroner, who's going to be sharing some of her best tips and practices on onboarding coaches effectively. But before I introduce Ruth and pass the mic over to her, I want to remind everyone that this call is being recorded and it will be posted in the Southeast Region Leader page after uh, the close of the call. And I wanted to also see if there were any announcements. Is Robbie with us? Robbie, do you have any announcements? I am here. There's some great announcements I'm going to share with you guys. Um, I don't know if all of you guys heard uh, or saw the Champions page yesterday. It was really buzzing yesterday with some great content. If you didn't have the opportunity to be on the, the Champions page yesterday, make sure you get over there. Check out all of the great content. There was content such as best, uh, best tips for success club, best tips for inviting, finding your voice uh, on social media by Bonnie Engel. Uh, there was tutorials on the Challenge Tracker app, power of personal development, guys. All of this great content is just waiting for you guys to jump over there, utilize as well. Help your downline get over there as well to see this great content. Um, I want to just bring up the April key drivers for us as well. Um, for the individuals who will be uh, um, Hitting SC5, we got the Shakeology apron waiting for you, the nice, sexy Shakeology apron. So make sure that we're hitting SC5. Um, continue to get your challenges over to that challenge track wrap, guys. It is super effective. And guys, as we all know, continuing to be consistent with the four vital behaviors, no secret, and being successful with those four vital behaviors. So that is what I got for us, Keyshawn, for our awesome announcements and our promotions. And the time is back to you, Keish. All right. Thanks, Robbie. Love our promotions. We have some great things in store. Key to the core, the sexy apron, <laughs> like Robbie mentioned. But the Champions page was absolutely buzzing yesterday. And if not necessarily for you, definitely for your personally sponsored coaches, definitely for your team and the organization, but also some great things that you can maybe use and take with your team just to build some culture over there. Um, like the Ring the Bell Challenge that was blowing up just for people saying, hey, I won my day. So anyway, thanks again, Robbie, for sharing those uh, promotions. Uh, now let's go ahead and let's get started for the reason why we're all here, <laughs> right? So um, we have a stud. We have one of the best in this business to share some of her tips and best practices on this subject, onboarding coaches effectively. Now let me just brag on her just a little bit because she's one of the most humble coaches we have. Ruth is a dog mom of two who's been actively coaching for 20 months. She's a success, uh, a seven star diamond who's helped mold 11 lifetime diamonds. 11. She and her team, Juvo Empire, finished 2015 as a top 20 elite team. She's a Success Club 10 all star with a Success Club base of 11. Ruth, we are so excited to have you on. Are you here and are you ready to rock and roll? I am ready. Thank you for that nice introduction. No problem, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Ruth Schroner. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I'm, I'm very excited to be here, and um, I'm going to go over kind of with you how what I've done in the past in terms of onboarding and training, what I've learned from that. Um, I feel like last year all I did was play with my onboarding process, and I have not touched it since December of this year, or of, of 2015, so it's been the same for four months. I feel like I have found something that works for me. And hopefully you'll be able to take pieces of this and apply it to your business as well. With that, though, I also encourage you to evaluate you and your business and where you're at in your business and know what things to apply now and what things you don't need to apply. And know that if you try and apply all this today, <laughs> you might drown yourself a little bit. So I hope that you just take the nuggets or tweak some of the things you're doing already. Um, but don't try and take all of this and change everything and think that um, it's going to solve, you know, every issue in your business or in your downline, things like that. Additionally, uh, while I'm going to tell you the four steps I take for onboarding, I still experience the same probably frustrations that you do. So it's not like I have this perfect onboarding system where no coach ever falls through the cracks or no coach ever quits. Um, but I do feel like it has improved um, substantially 
And hopefully some of these things will help you as well. I think sometimes we see these coaches get up here and tell their onboarding process and it seems like it's like fail safe and like they don't experience the same frustrations. And I have been through all of those same frustrations um, as well, but it has gotten a lot less with this, this newer process. So last year, just to let you know where I came from and what I did in my business um, in terms of training and how I've evolved since last year. Last year, I piggybacked on my uplines training for a very, very long time. And I, I encourage everybody to do that. After I was, you know, a year and a half into my business, that's when I started looking at doing my own trainings and things like that for my team because my downline had, had grown so much and I kind of wanted to take a little more ownership for my business. So I went through trying to do email trainings using streak last year, doing the two week Facebook trainings, um, a binder in the box checklist training. And then I came to this, the solution that I'm going to show you today. So those are different formats that I tried. And I know some of those formats work very well for other coaches. Um, but none of them seem to fit me in kind of my, how I flow with my processes. So with that, I'm going to go over, the welcome email that I use, how I establish my GSR calls, new coach basics, how I run that, and then what I call my new coach mentorship call. And I'll spend a majority of the time on the last two steps of this process. Um, so to start with, and I'm going to share my screen, I believe I can do that. I know that everyone probably has a new coach or a, a welcome email that they send to all of their new coaches. I'm going to show you what mine looks like. I'm happy to share it. It really isn't anything special. I think um, I've changed this probably four times and this is where I'm at now, but I'll tell you what I think the important things are that I found are the important things for me and my team um, as I'm onboarding new coaches. So the first thing, anyone who joins my team gets the same email if they are coming into this and they're not sure if they want to work the business or if they're just interested in getting that discount in the beginning, I will still send them this. I'll just put a disclaimer at the top saying like, Hey, I know currently you only are interested in the discount, but I do want you to be aware of this opportunity. If you think you'd like to explore it, we have the support system waiting for you. So I do send them a version of this, but what I think the actual important thing in this welcome email is, is that, um, it establishes our mission as a team and who we are as a team. So that's the first thing I talk about is our team name, what it means, why it's in place, and you know where we want to go as a team, our team mission. From that, the first thing I talk about is I have this welcome video here, and it really talks about why coach, you know, to dream big, to think about where they want to take their business and really encourage them to establish a vision for their own life. So it kind of starts with their why. And I want to get them pushing beyond just like, Oh, I want to, you know, maybe make a hundred bucks a month. But so that video, it's a video I made last year, but it really um, encourages them to dream bigger. First thing off the bat. I think that is kind of important in the beginning just to, let them know what this opportunity can do for their life and have them begin thinking about that right away. The next thing I attached an about me document, and this is something I actually started doing I think at the end of the year last year, and I really like it and I'll tell you how it ties into my GSR, but this about me document simply ask who they are, uh, what their current health, health is like, where they want to take their health, um, where they want to take their business and their worries, their challenges that they think they're going to encounter about the business. So I ask them to fill this out first and send it back to me. I love having a copy of this because I can always go back to it and say, hey, when you came into this, here's what you wanted to do. Are you still in that place or have you, has your vision grown or is it no longer there or what's going on? But so they fill this out and send it back to me and I have that. And then it tells them about the GSR. And um, I need that about me before they get on this GSR because I need to know more about them before they're on that call. And I also ask them to do the seven day quick start that's in the back office. I ask them to do that before the GSR. And um, 
I ask them to begin their training that is in a Facebook group. I'll discuss that in a moment. So it just has the first five steps and it is a lot of information. So I've, I've went back and forth the past year of too little information, too much information, how not to overwhelm them. It is such a difficult balancing act. Um, but I get less overwhelm now than I used to. So I think it's gotten a little bit better. But so these are the fi first five steps. And then I just um, say here, you know, here are your goals, but we're gonna talk about these goals on the GSR. So that's the first thing that I do. I attach an about me form for them to fill out in the quick, the seven day quick start. Now from here, um, I'll discuss my GSR. Let me see. Yes, I will share this. Yep, absolutely. And this is a collaboration of other coaches that I've taken and mixed it all up. I will share this with everybody. Okay, so for my GSR, how I do GSRs um, has changed greatly. I will tell you that last year I was doing one-on-one -on -one GSR calls, and I really do love how much that allows me to get to know people, but long-term it is not um, a valuable use of my time. And I say that because I, have, I had so many coaches who would either not show up for the GSR, or we would spend an hour discussing the business and then I'd never hear from them again. Or, um, you know, they would work for a month or so and you can never get that time back. So at this point in my business, I reserve those one-on-one -on -one calls for coaches who have really proven that they are working and that they're dedicated to this business. And in the beginning, I do a group weekly GSR call. Um, once a week, it's 45 minutes right before my team call on Tuesdays. And again, it's listed in the email here with the link. And before they come to this, they should have the about me to you. They should have done the seven day quick start. And then we dive in, in terms of getting to know them a little bit better. We discuss who they are, why they're here. It's the first focus. And I also ask them their financial goals. So I do ask them about their why and try and drive that home. But usually they're too new at this point to really get into their why. They haven't stretched their mind that much. So I ask their financial goals because that's something concrete that we can look at. Numbers. Okay, if you want to make $500 a month, here's how to do that. So after we establish the why and their financial goals, um, we discuss Success Club and Emerald Rank. Because Success Club is directly linked to them and their financial goals and their bigger why. And I talk about how it's linked and how Success Club is going to either help them earn that financial goal or reach their bigger why. And I can say that, especially for my business, why it's grown so fast is because I never stopped at Success Club 5. That was never my goal. My goal was to help as many people as possible. So I can honestly tell them, you know, Success Club that's where this business builds. Do that. Um, and then obviously getting to emerald rank and then diamond rank. So we start discussing that now, that from the very beginning and why it's important. Um, we also discuss what they have put down as their challenges, what they believe is going to be a challenge for them. So in that discussion, we can talk about time management, personal development, overcoming fears, because those are usually the three biggest obstacles people come into this business facing. So we kind of spearhead that from the beginning, and then we talk about the next steps, which is the new coach training and the new coach mentorship call. Any questions about those two things? Pretty basic up until this point. Okay, so my new coach basics. This is what I um, established in December and after doing all sorts of different types of training. Let's see here. All right, so my new coach basics is in a self enclosed Facebook group. I would like to move this also to a website, but at this point, uh, this is working pretty well. So my new coach basics is in a separate enclosed Facebook group. It doesn't have an open date. It doesn't have an end date. It simply exists. And this is the hub for all of our training, all of our scripts, all of our team information um, in terms of training specific. It is all housed in this one location. So the new coaches have this link right away. They're also placed in this. And there is a pinned post at the very top. 
So in this pinned post, there's a video. It's very short and it's just me explaining how New Coach Basics works and how to navigate through this training. And part of that is our tracking system. So I'll show you that in just a moment. But it sets the expectation that they can take this at their own pace, but all of this information is very valuable. They need to go through it. This is, this is the business, the keys to the kingdom. Boom, it's here. Um, I've adapted this training from the new coach basics in the online office. And also then with my um, uplines training, I kind of did a mashup of the two and then also weaving in kind of my own um, beliefs of how, what works for this business. And in doing so, there are 20 lessons in this um, that cover everything from getting started, compensation plan, all of that information. So in each of these, there are, um, they click on it. And there's the information. But at the very bottom, there's action items, and this is attached to every single lesson. Uh, this one's actually pretty basic since it's just about the coach online office, but there's action items in there to comment with the answers to these questions. I have a teaching background, so I want them to take this and apply it immediately. So I ask them to, hey, did you do this? And you can see here, they put their answers. When we get to like story, um, crafting your story, things like that, there are specific action items about posts, your story on Facebook, or if it's about Shakeology. Today, post a Shakeology selfie on Facebook and do X, Y, and Z with that. So when they get further on, the action items are directly related to their social media and posting different things on social media. Um, so they do that and then, let's see here, up in the top, and they're aware of this, there's a tracking document, Google Docs, and they track their progress along the way. And it's just, you know, like anyone else, we have people who finish, we have people who do one thing and then <laughs> never do anything else. So all the regular struggles. Um, and what we do as they go along is we recognize them for their progress. So, about bi-weekly, we'll do a new coach basics recognition in my entire downline team page. So not in new coach basics, but actually in the team page for the Juvo Empire. And we'll um, post their picture. And we'll also, I don't know why it's not showing up on this one, but in the description, it says you can take the training too. And here's a link to the new coach basics. That way, if someone like downline, downline, isn't getting into this group, hopefully that they'll see this recognition popping up every week or every few weeks. They'll see that there's a link where they too can take the training. And it usually happens as soon as we post this recognition, there's like three to five requests to join this new coach basics group. If in case some somehow they got lost along the way and they never got put in the group by their upline coach. Um, so that is how the new coach basics goes. Yeah, and with that, I will say too, um, I, like I said, it's a mashup, so I use different YouTube videos. I never took the time to create YouTube videos for every single topic myself. So there are multiple YouTube videos from different coaches in there. Um, so they're hearing from a variety of coaches, not just myself. And um, I definitely never took the time to make a video over every single topic. I know some coaches choose to do that. It's not something that I've done because I feel like they're getting a better perspective from all these other coaches in this business, aside from just always hearing my side, because there are so many ways to build this business and so many people who bring in different perspectives and bigger talents to learn from. So I utilize so many other coaches in the training. Um, yes, there's 20. Um, I can share my, I don't know how I would share all of the trainings, but I can put the topics on there. That would take me a while to, uh, post every single training somewhere. So I'll have to consider how to do that in the most efficient way possible. Okay.
And then, so that's kind of the second step of the new coach training. Um, and I monitor this weekly. I'll go in, of course, I'm getting the notifications, but I don't spend a lot of time in there hovering and seeing who's done what. One, because we do have the tracking system, but two, because I don't think it's really a valuable use of my time to go and manage people. It is there. They see that it's there. They have the same opportunity of everyone as everyone else to use this information and to build their business. Um, but I do monitor it. I like to like things and I'll take time to comment sometimes, but I do not spend a lot of time managing this group. It's very hands off. Okay, and then the last thing that I do. So currently this is the first lesson in the new coach basics. So I used to do this call monthly. I called it my new coach mentorship call. This is the one thing that I believe changed my business the most in 2015. Like this is to me the best thing I've ever done for my team. Um, I will tell you that I am a red personality. So when I came into this business, I just did everything. I just did it. Someone said to do it. I did it. I hosted a challenge group. Wasn't any big deal. But what I realized is that a lot of people aren't like that. <laughs> um, so when people would say to host like a team challenge group, I was like, why do, do I need to do that? Like it's a challenge group. It's easy. Just go do it. But I listened to Melanie Mitro's call last year from Beachbody Summit 2014. It's called Creating High Performance Teams. And I decided I would try this because I didn't have enough coaches hitting Success Club. I felt like a lot of people were falling through the cracks. And so that's when I implemented what I call the new coach mentorship call, which is this. And last year I did it every month. This year it's a recording um, and it's the first lesson in new coach basics. But Basically, to sum it up for you, it's an hour-long call of basically how to open your fitness business. In this call, we go over, you know, they think about their goals, um, and we relate those to Success Club and Emerald, go over those things briefly, and then I have them set their goals for the first months of their business. As you can see, I did this one in January, and I haven't redone it yet, so I'll probably do another one here in the next month or so. And we go over, okay, now it's time to set your challenge group date. They have two options. If they want to run their own, they can. If they don't, this is where I host a team challenge group for my entire downline. With that being said, I ask that my diamonds are bringing in their coaches to their own. I'm asking my diamonds to basically do this for their own teams as well. Um, but so there's a team challenge group that I host. And my coaches are invited to be part of it and to bring challengers to it. So that way we will co-lead this challenge group um, their first month that they are a coach. So I have one that starts every month um, and I usually always have coaches who join it. Now, with that being said, the expectation for the team challenge group is not like everyone just dump your coaches in there and I'll take care of everybody. I'm trying to help people find their passion in this business. And for me, the passion that I found was in helping people in my challenge groups. That's where the magic happens. So I want them to run their own challenge group at some point. And the expectation is the first one, I'll show you the ropes. The second one you are going to host on your own. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then you're going to go do it on your home, on your own. Um, I do ask them to make posts to my team challenge groups and they're responsible for some of the posts in there and they're required to participate. They are also required to bring three challengers. So that expectation is set. You need to have three challengers who are coming to this with a challenge pack um, to be included in this. We're setting the bar for our new coaches. If you say one challenger, they're going to bring one challenger. If you say three challengers, they're going to, I should probably say five, they're going to bring, bring three challengers. Um, so that expectation is set that they are expected to bring at least three challengers and that this is not a dumping ground for people who just want the money but don't actually want to help people um, so that expectation is set and with those expectations being firmly set I don't have very many issues with my challenge my team challenge groups people do what they need to do um, I don't feel like I'm being like taken advantage of and people are just throwing coaches in there or challengers so then in this 
And again, like Melanie Mitro goes over all of this, so I'm not going to spend time um, going over too much of it. But we talk about crafting their first invites, and I talk about how I reached out to my mom and my sister, um, and then, you know, Ben. So my first success club were those three people, getting to Emerald with those three people. And I just give them some examples and go over the basic, very basic, high-level do's and don'ts of the five-step invitation process, social media posting, um, and then how to get someone your link. So just the very basics of everything. It's an hour long call, which is a long call, but if they watch it, I've had so many coaches say like, oh, that was helpful. That explains kind of everything in a very condensed way, but at least to get them going on the right track while they are still taking their new coach basics training, because that will take obviously more time to really master these topics on a higher level. But this usually helps helps us avoid things like just sending a link to someone without talking to them about their goals or just putting your link on Facebook. We avoid some of those issues because of this call. Um, so yes, that is the new coach mentorship call. I really encourage everybody. I, this has changed everything about my business um, and everything about my team. So, and I do think it probably was better when I did it live. I should host these monthly. I'm considering going back to that. Uh, but I really nailed this recording the first time I did it, so I just don't want to do it again. <laughs> you know, have a live call and just play my YouTube video. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that is kind of the new coach mentorship call that everyone goes through in the very beginning. Um, other things that I, in terms of kind of advice and tips, when you're becoming a new leader on your team, it's probably, it's very kind of, slow process and sometimes you want to move faster but you haven't found these coaches who want to move as fast as you yet and it can kind of be a little bit lonely and you might feel like you're pulling or pushing coaches um, I encourage you to be there for your coaches give them the resources be supportive but do not spend your mental energy trying to chase or pull people along take that mental energy and know that you've provided everything you need for your coaches and know that you are there for them and you've made that very clear. I am here for my coaches. If you need something, reach out to me. I've made that very clear to my coaches and I don't spend mental energy um, or energy trying to pull people along and say, hey, are you gonna do new coach basics? Hey, are you gonna post about this? Hey, are you inviting? I don't do that because I've already set the bar of what's expected. I spend that energy finding other people who also want to work this business instead of trying to pull coaches to work this business. We all have the same opportunity in this and the same training and it's there for everybody. So I cannot make people do my training or go through the training or do the things that they need. I can't make people do that. The only thing I can control is myself. So I'm going to take that energy and I'm going to go offer this opportunity to other people and give them the chance to change their life with it. I think a lot of um, leaders get stuck on the fact that they have a lot of coaches, maybe they don't have a lot of coaches, maybe they have 10, but out of the 10, two coaches want to work and they're banking on those two coaches to build them to diamond or to build them to two star diamond. And they're saying, I just wish my coaches would do this or that or this or that. But again, you can't wish your coaches to do anything. You just have to continue offering this to other people. This business really isn't about you getting to diamond or you getting to two star diamond. This business is about offering this opportunity to everybody to allow them to change their life, to give more people the opportunity to change their life with this business instead of just saying, well, I have two people who said they want to work. No, go offer this opportunity to more people. Give it to more people. And in that, you're going to find more workers who do want to work and who will show you, you know, that they're willing to build this business. But don't get caught up in in trying to make your coaches work or do something, use that energy to offer this opportunity to so many more people. And that's where you're going to find more success rather than using it to pull people along or drag people along or hope that people will start working. Okay, that is all I have. Let's see, do we have questions? Yes, I think that you may have answered all the questions, Ruth. I was looking to see if there was maybe one that you hadn't. And I'm pretty sure that all of the questions that were asked 
recently were questions that you had already answered. So if there are if there are any other questions that maybe we didn't answer, go ahead and, and put that in the chat. But Ruth, oh my gosh, mic drop, exit stage left. You dropped some really some important nuggets on onboarding your coaches. But that 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 motivation and inspiration at the end of the call, you know, setting those expectations, using that energy to find new people, to reach out, to let new people know about this amazing, holistic, life-changing opportunity, rather than pulling people up uh, a steep mountain, because typically what you're doing is enough, and being okay with sticking with what you have. Oh my gosh, girl, I just have a ton of notes. It was awesome. Again, this call was recorded, guys. It will be posted in all of our region pages, so the, the two-star diamond leader page, the diamond and one-star leader page, as well as on Craig's, uh, Craig Collier's Beachbody YouTube channel. All right, so there was a question from Sarah. Curious about how many coaches you're adding to this on a monthly basis and how many challenge groups you're adding monthly. Um, I do one challenge group a month. So it's kicks off like usually the first Monday. So one challenge group a month I add, um, this year, I, I think the average is like 12 that I add a month, but usually around eight to 10 coaches monthly. That has been this year. Last year, I think it was probably an average of 14, maybe monthly. Wow. Um, so yes. And then I will post the recording in our Southeast region group along with Melanie Mitras because that's really who goes through it step by step. So she has some, obviously some very good tips and pointed direction on that as well. Love it. Thank you, Ruth. And we'll be sure that we disseminate that over in the Diamond and One Star page if you guys are in that region page. All right. Well, Craig, did you have any final words before we close today? Final words are thank you, you guys. Thank you for all you do to share Beachbody. Thank you uh, for taking the time to be on this call today, to invest um, time on your Friday, uh, to invest in your Beachbody business, to invest in yourselves. And of course, just a heartfelt thank you to Ruth Schroner for sharing this great information. We're so lucky to have um, a leader like Ruth in our region who's so willing to jump on and share information with everyone across every team. Um, you know, uh, just being willing to, to have that uh, law of abundance mindset and share with others. So thank you to you, Ruth. And you guys have a great weekend and uh, go get it done. Have a great day. Right. Get it done. Bye, guys.